From yarn to sweaters, wool to Rolex, I got your back. Let me introduce you to the 45th annual New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival. If you're going for the first time or need a bit of a boost, if it's been a while, I've got you covered. I'm going to kick about some tips and tricks to help you make the best of your festival experience. Located at the Deerfield Fairgrounds on 34 State Road in Deerfield, New Hampshire, the festival is divided among several buildings, pop-ups, and outdoor areas. Not to worry, pack some sunscreen, put on your walking shoes, and bring us an umbrella. If you have one handy, and let's get started. First off, the lines were short at the ticket booth, and don't forget to grab your festival guide. It has everything you need from a schedule of events, lectures, and demos, but also contact info of vendors. So just in case you have some regret on not purchasing that luscious yarn, or want to contact a breeder later on, you have all the info you need at your fingertips. Sometimes going to a fire festival can be a sensory overload, but that's what I'm here for, to help you plan out your trip for your next woolly adventure. Today's sponsor is Fudge, and for every like, he will snort your deep, deep aroma. And hey, Fudge, okay, not the hair. Continuing on, walking in and starting off, let's visit the youth show tent. Here we have some young stars in the making. Look at that beautiful haircut. I love those stockings. How about you? Plan on spending several hours walking around. The buildings were handicap accessible, and if you're using walking assistance, most of the paths are paved and level. More on this later. Next up is building sheep barn number one and number two. On the map, you'll see it as SB1 and SB2. Let's go explore. Here we get to meet and interact with breed ambassadors. There were a lot of breeders here selling fleece, roving, and finished products all created with their favorite breed of sheep. Also, the Dover FFA had a booth raising money to help the next generation of shepherds and animal enthusiasts. The sheep shearing demonstration is located outside of sheep barn number one. Continue on. Passing by the restrooms, all very clean and well maintained, we bump into the t-shirt booth. Here, not only can you get a festival swag, but also get a deal on all things fiber. They hold a used equipment sale with some beautiful spinning wheels, magazines, sheep equipment, and more. As an added bonus, 15% of the sales help support the festival. Moving on, directly across the t-shirt and used equipment booths is the main gate area. Here we have some sweet displays of sheep handling equipment, fencing, and ooh la la. Grab yourself a catalog and start your dream farm. It's almost 1 o'clock and that means herd dog demos. There was plenty of space for sitting. Did you bring a blanket? No. Ah oh, well. Wheelchair and walking with assistance wise, the ground was packed, but I still think the biggest challenge would be navigating the softly rolling hill to see the lectures and demos up close. Almost every seat was prime watching though. Look how cute those dogs work. Next up, let's head on to building A, the arts and crafts building. There's the main ground floor and a wide variety of vendors selling yarns, dyes, mustards, pottery, and cutting boards. On one end of the building is a spinning circle, as well as information about the New Hampshire Spinners and Dyers Guild, as well as the New Hampshire Weavers Guild. Hot tip, where are the classes and demonstrations located? It wasn't obvious to me, but to get to the classes and lecture hall, CR and LH on the map, they're underneath building A. There's a walkout basement. To access it, let's walk around the ground level, down the hill a bit, here. Behind the building are a large overhead door or garage door, and that's it. That's the entrance. There are plenty of seating though for the fleece lecture that I attended. It was easier to stand next to the project table and touch some beautiful fleece. Another hot tip is if you plan on registering for a class or lesson that requires a payment at the festival, pick up the registration form in the classroom, then go to the t-shirt booth down the path a ways to pay and validate your form. Then when it's time for your class, don't forget to bring the form along as your receipt. Along the main strip of road in front of building A is the main food truck and food stand areas. The prices were standard cost for festival food, and, and you have some nice selection of lamb-based bites for our T-Rex folks. 
and for plant-based diets, there are yummy alternatives as well. That being said, cash is king. A lot of food vendors spread throughout the festival only accepted cash. There was an ATM shack that was devoid of ATMs, but hidden in the inside the back of building A are where you can find the legit ATMs. After a quick bite to eat, let's get moving. Off to the outdoor vending areas and the commercial ag building number two. Here we have a bakery selling some fun cookies, bars, and more, as well as a tent selling plants for a dyer's garden. Super fun. In the commercial ag building number two, or COM2 on the map, well, if you love bunnies, Angor products, or exotic fibers, then you'll have fun here. There's a gentleman running the bunny booth here who was pretty funny. And look how cute they are. Next up, the fleece barn, FB on the map. The selection of the fleece was pretty gutted by the time I wandered over there. And I saw many people walking with bags of fleece. So if you want the best selection and great prices, it's important to go early and snatch yourself a bag or three. Wow, are you tired? My feet are so sore and we still didn't cover everything. Overall, most of the vendors were happy to answer questions. And it was really wonderful to learn from breed ambassadors about their wool, favorite wool species, and how they express their favorite fiber art. There were a few vendors I found a bit unnecessarily aggressive from my sensibilities. Also, not all vendors were keen on their goods being touched. Sometimes I got a swift bark, no touching. And then there are other booths that not only encourage touching their products, but one booth even had what they called a petting zoo. It was a cardstock with locks of base fibers from mink, yak, to bamboo, which I found great to feel the difference of the fibers, hands-on, as well as super kind. Some of the vendors had trouble with cell service and getting their card thingies to work, so it's really important if you plan on shopping to go with cash in hand. They really pack a lot of events as well that can go on for a couple hours. Practically each area had demonstrations or lectures, so you may have to prioritize must-sees and do's to balancing your time as it goes by fast. Till next year's festivities, I hope you enjoyed watching and maybe next year I'll see you there. In the meantime, I appreciate you and don't forget pearls over diamonds.